In this video, I'm going to share five quick tips that you need to know if you're new to DaVinci Resolve. And these tips will apply to both the free version and the studio version. So if you have DaVinci Resolve, feel free to follow along. Now, with DaVinci Resolve 17's beta version, I have found that it sometimes randomly just crashes while I'm in the middle of working on a project, but I never have to worry about losing any of my work, and that's because I've enabled Live Save. To do that, click on the DaVinci Resolve tab, preferences, and we want to choose user, project save and load, and under save settings, let's check mark live save. This is great because it will save your work in real time. So every single adjustment and change you make to your video project will be saved. And since I've been working with live save turned on, I haven't even noticed it saving in the background or interrupting me while I work. So I highly recommend that you make sure live save is check marked. And I also do recommend that you enable project backups. You can choose how often you want the backups to take place by clicking on this drop down menu. I like to have my projects backed up every five minutes. You can also adjust the hourly backups, daily backups, and choose where your project backups are located. I choose to have them backed up on my D drive right on my desktop in a Resolve Projects Backup folder. Click save and now you don't have to worry about losing all the hard work you've done if a crash does happen. Number two, let's say you have a clip in your media bin and you want the timeline that you're working with to use that clip's settings. Well, what I like to do in this case is right click on that specific clip and choose create new timeline using selected clip. This create new timeline box pops up and you can change the timeline name, change the number of video tracks, audio tracks, as well as changing the audio track type. I'm gonna stick with based on the selected media. And this doesn't apply to this particular clip, but if I did have my in and out point marked on the clip, leaving this check marked would bring down onto our timeline only the selected area I had created an in and out point for. And we're gonna talk a bit more about in and out points coming up. By default, we also have use project settings check marked. Having this check marked is what allows DaVinci Resolve to create a timeline based on the settings from that clip. If you were to uncheck it, you would have these different options come up, which would allow you to customize your timeline settings. Let's keep use project settings check marked, press create, and now we have our new timeline created with clip one on it using clip one settings. As an editor, you know as well as I do how important organization is to save you time and to keep you sane when you're working. So let's create some bins to get nice and organized. To do that, within your media pool, right click and choose add bin. We have a folder here, this is bin one. Let's rename this by double clicking where it says bin one, we'll call it footage. And now I'm gonna select all of my footage within my media pool. So I'll grab number eight, hold down shift on my keyboard and go to the beginning of my footage here, which is at number one. Now I'll drag them right into my footage bin. And if I need to access that bin for any reason, I can just double click on it and and here is all my footage. And if we wanna go back, we can just click on master here and right click again, add bin. We'll call this one audio. I'll select all my audio, drag it into my audio bin and make another bin for screen caps. You could also go up to this little icon on the left here, click on the drop down menu that says bin list and click on any of your bins to get a closer look at what's inside. Number four. So to start working on my edit, I could either drag all of these clips onto my timeline and cut and trim each part wherever I want, or I can do this. So I'll select clip three, which brings it up in my program window here. And and using my cursor at the bottom of the program window here, I can scrub throughout this clip until I find the area that I know I want the shot to begin at, which is right here. So I'll press I on my keyboard. Doing this creates what is known in the editing world as an endpoint. I'll continue scrubbing through and I want this part of the clip to end here where my playhead is. So I'll press O on my keyboard to create an out point. And now when I click on the program monitor to drag this clip onto my timeline, it has only brought down the part of my clip starting at my in point and ending at my out point. Okay, and this final tip I'm gonna show you is one that every video editor needs to know how to use and do, and that is working with solid colors. Creating a solid color on screen is great if you 
want to add titles to your video. It's great to use for transitions. There are tons of reasons to use solid colors. So I'm in my edit tab. I want to make sure I've got the effect library selected. We can see it down here. And I'm going to scroll down until I find the generators tab. So we've got lots of cool options here. Continuing down here, we have solid color. So we can select it and drag it onto our V1 track. Let's go into our inspector tab under generator. Let's double click on the color box. And now we can choose whatever color we would like. I'm going to bring my cursor over blue and then I can use this slider on the right to adjust the brightness. Press OK. Great. So we now have this solid blue color here. And while we're here, why not also take a quick look at four color gradient. This is another cool background that I love to use when I'm putting text on screen. Let's select it and we'll drag it onto the V2 track. And we can click on any of these four color boxes to open them up and adjust our color. So I want the upper left corner to be more of a pinkish purple. I'll choose a pinkish purple here and then I can use this slider to adjust that further. Press OK. I'll change the lower right corner as well and you get the idea. And we could also adjust where the center X axis sits on screen by adjusting the slider as well as the Y axis. And there you go. Those are my five tips for DaVinci Resolve newbies. If you want to take a deeper dive into learning DaVinci Resolve, I highly recommend you check out my Learn DaVinci Resolve 16 video editing in 16 minutes for beginners tutorial. And even though I created it for DaVinci Resolve 16, everything will still apply. And we release weekly filmmaking videos here on our channel. We have over 70 how-to videos, so check them out and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest from us. Thanks and we'll see you in another video.